Hi there, my name is Vic Veer. I'm an ENT consultant surgeon that works in the National Health Service in England. I work at the Royal National ENT Hospital and also in Queen's and King George's Hospital in Essex. My job on the NHS is to help people with snoring and sleep apnea issues. And today I want to tell you about a new device called Exavent that may well help do that. Exavent is a device developed to help people with the coronavirus pandemic. I'll explain that and I'll also explain how it might be helpful for people with sleep disordered breathing. Now I'm going to explain a little bit about sleep disordered breathing, but if you already know about central sleep apnea or obesity hyperventilation syndrome, please just skip on to the next bit. So sleep disordered breathing describes a spectrum of problems. At the very start, you've got things like snoring and pretty much everyone knows what snoring is. If you don't know what snoring is, it's the noise your husband will make on the second or third day of your honeymoon. Sleep apnea, on the other hand, is when you actually stop breathing and your oxygen levels start dropping down. So it's like a <coughs> oxygen set levels drop and then <gasps> you take a deep breath and you start all over again. There are actually two different types of sleep apnea. There's the obstructive sleep apnea, which most people know about, where something like your tongue or the back wall of your throat or your tonsils block your throat, obstructive, and you stop breathing because of that. And you need to wake up a little bit to <gasps> take a breath and then start all over again. There is another type of sleep apnea called central sleep apnea. This is when your brain stops sending signals to your lungs or your uh, diaphragm to get you to breathe. So it's not an obstructive problem, it's just your brain is not giving you the signals to breathe. The last thing I'll tell you about is obesity hyperventilation syndrome. This is based on the fact that when we sleep, we tend to take more shallow breaths, which is fine when you're resting and you're sleeping. If you have an awful lot of weight on your chest, you don't have the, uh, the strength or the, the ability to take a deep enough breath to allow you to breathe properly. So the physical weight on your chest prevents you from taking a deep enough breath. When this happens, you don't get enough gas exchange for you to breathe properly. And you don't breathe properly, you get a condition similar to sleep apnea with all the tiredness and the other things that go with it. Exavent normally works by using negative pressure ventilation, which is actually the opposite of what we normally use in surgery when people are having an operation. When you watch the movies or if you've ever seen anyone, they tend to have a tube into their throat. And what they're doing is the anaesthetic machine is pumping air into their lungs and filling it up that way. The only problem with this is that you can't actually be awake with this tube in your throat because you'll just gag on it. And so you need to be asleep. You need to have all your muscles rested because you don't want all your muscles clamping on your, uh, the tube into your throat. You can't do that for a very long time because it causes damage to your throat and also damages your vocal cords and other things like that. So if you've had this tube in your throat for about two weeks or so, we tend to replace that tube in your throat for a hole here called a tracheostomy. The other problem with being asleep particularly is that a nurse needs to look after you all the time because uh, you can't therefore clean yourself and you need to be moved all the time. Otherwise, if you stay in one place for too long, you'll get pressure sores. These people need an awful lot of care. You need a nurse to look after you 24 hours a day. And it's quite a lot of effort and a lot of expense. So negative pressure ventilation is the opposite of positive pressure. When we breathe naturally, we don't blow air into our lungs, we suck the air in. And the way we do that is by increasing the size of our lungs, by increasing the size of our rib cage. The lungs therefore draw air in. Now, this might be a little bit confusing to understand, so I've made a little experiment so you can see what it means. So this is the experiment. You need a, a balloon, I've chosen a red one, and you need a plastic bottle, uh, which you can see through. I, unfortunately, um, I've got Bayless and Harding, sweet mandarin and grapefruit, which is going to do wonders for my gangster image. And because all YouTubers are doing this now, uh, I'm going to put a, um, an affiliate marketing link for this in the description. It just seems funny. So what I'm going to do is consider this is the rib cage and this balloon is the lung. I'm going to put the lung into my rib cage, which I've created without losing it, and seal it over the top. So this bit here will be my mouth and there you can see the balloon inside. I made a little hole somewhere on the side here, just here. Now, if you're doing positive pressure ventilation, you're blowing that balloon up by forcing air in through this mouth here, like, like that. And that's how positive pressure works. Now, negative pressure ventilation is when you're sucking the air out of the rib cage and letting the balloon fill up that way. So if I, I'll watch, just try and watch me do this. I might speed that bit up, sorry. Um, but you can see the balloon is all filled up. I can put my finger through that hole. You might be able to see it, the hole is open, 
but the balloon is still inflated. It's quite cool. And when I let the, my finger go from the little hole here, it should just all deflate like that. And so that's how negative pressure ventilation works. So in the same way, our rib cage increases in size. I haven't got a, a bottle that increases in size, but by increasing in size and there's an airtight seal, the balloon inside tends to swell up as well. And then the air from the outside world rushes in. And that's why, although the, uh, the end was open, the balloon was still inflated. A bit like when you take a deep breath in. <gasps> I can hold it there, my mouth is open, and the air doesn't just rush out, it's because I've opened up my lungs. So essentially, this is how Exavent works. What we're doing is that we're forcing the rib cage to open up, and it therefore draws in air from the outside world. So you can see from the images that there's a barrel that goes around the chest, and it causes negative pressure to lift the chest or the rib cage up, and that forces air into the lungs. And in that way, air gets sucked into the lungs and ventilates you. So uh, there's gas exchange, so you can get oxygen, you can get rid of carbon dioxide. The main advantage of this is that you can be completely awake whilst doing this. So you don't need to be anaesthetized at all. You don't need a tube into your throat, which can cause damage. It's so comfortable, in fact, that you can eat and drink and sleep in this machine, and it causes very little distress to your body. The point of this device is that it helps you breathe. It takes the pressure off, it takes the effort out of breathing, so therefore it becomes very comfortable and very easy to use. This, I believe, is a complete game changer for the coronavirus pandemic. Not everyone needs those positive pressure ventilators and to be looked after by a single nurse. If someone is well enough to come off the ventilator and go into something less invasive like the negative pressure ventilation, we can free up that positive pressure ventilation for the people who really need it, and then we can send these people who can breathe but need a lot of help to another ward which is less stressful and don't need so many nurses to look after them because nurses and doctors, everyone is in short supply at the moment. Plus also the Exavent machine is much cheaper than the, uh, the anaesthetic machines, the positive pressure ventilation machines. The team that made the Exavent device put it together to help with the coronavirus outbreak. But we also think that this will help people in the third world because actually it's so cheap that we hopefully we can make one which is about 300 pounds, which is much cheaper than the 18,000 pound positive pressure machines that we currently have. We really think it'll help people with severe asthma, coronavirus, as I said, uh, COPD, which is a mixture of uh, chronic bronchitis and emphysema. I think it'll also help people who are unable to move their rib cage. For example, people with a stroke, Guillain-Barre syndrome, spinal cord injuries. So even after the coronavirus outbreak, this will help people for many, many years, I think. Now, the reason why I'm excited about this device is that I think it will really help people, particularly with central sleep apnea. If you remember from the start of the video, Central sleep apnea is when the body isn't sending the right signals to the lungs to take a deep enough breath. This happens at sleep, at night, and that currently what we do is we give them a CPAP device. CPAP device is a mask that's worn tightly here, and it blows air into your lungs. Now, a lot of people find CPAP rather difficult to use because it's quite claustrophobic and it leaks and it wakes people up. But if you can use something which is much more comfortable to wear and put this machine on, then it'll be far more tolerable for these people and it'll be much easier for them to sleep. So the idea of Exavent in this situation is that they can breathe normally, but if they ever stopped breathing because of their central sleep apnea, Exavent will take over and start taking breaths for them. I think it'll also help people with obesity hyperventilation syndrome, because if you remember, they have to put a lot of effort into breathing to push that weight out of the way. If this takes the pressure off them, does some of the work for them to breathe, I think it will really help them. There are some problems with that, of course, because some people with obesity hyperventilation syndrome have obstructive sleep apnea. At the moment, we're not certain whether it'll help people with obstructive sleep apnea. Traditionally, it's thought that negative pressure ventilation tends to make sleep apnea worse or obstructive sleep apnea worse. But we have some ideas to try and make this so actually it will help people with obstructive sleep apnea. Exavent as a company is a charity set up by lots of different specialties from around the world. I got involved because uh, my anaesthetist Jim Roberts and some of the other people in our hospital, Anil Patel and Professor David Howard, all got together to try and help this project. Uh, all of these people have been putting several hours of every night into making this work over the last year during the coronavirus pandemic. Because I think this is a great endeavor, all done free and volunteered through doctors in the NHS and also engineers. This is the reason I wanted to make this video so everyone is aware of it. The device you see in uh, all these images are prototypes. They're quite large and they're very functional. The idea is that we're going to make this smaller and smaller and smaller. So to the point where it's just a, almost like a bulletproof vest or, or, or a chest plate armor on your chest. 
And so we can walk around and be mobile with it. The future with this technology is really exciting. I think it'll work really well for central sleep apnea patients. We're hoping it'll work really well for obesity hyperventilation syndrome patients. We're not sure about obstructive sleep apnea. We've got some ideas that we think that will work. But even if it doesn't work, then we're going to learn so much about obstructive sleep apnea. This will help us create new technologies, new devices that will help people. The closer we'll come to finding a good solution for these patients. And if we can treat these people who are currently untreated with obstructive sleep apnea, I think it will really help. So as I said, I'm really excited about this device. I hope it really helps people. And what I'll do is if I get more information about X event device, I will release it on this video. So please do subscribe and hopefully I can give you information as it comes through. Thank you very much for watching.